What's going on? I'm Larry Hoover Jr. and I'm rocking with Street Certified News. Oh, it is your boy Kiss, man. Shout out to Street Certified News. Yeah, what's your boy, El Hitter, Mr. Oh, yeah, y'all already know what it is, man. I'm rocking with Street Certified News. Recently, um, did you see the Rollo interview he did with Say Cheese? Yeah, I seen it. Yep. Yeah, I th I thought it was a little weird that um he spent a lot of time like over explaining himself. Did you did you notice that? On oh, some finesse two time shit, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so but now i noticed that he spent a lot of time explaining himself uh he, he kind of ran down like what a fall guy is and you know how in the mafia they would use fall guys and um it actually had piqued my interest like um for people that don't know like rollo was actually one of my favorite artists even after he got locked up like i just always fucked with you know, he might not have had like the best songs, even though he do got some 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 dope songs. You just got to know which ones to listen to. But I just liked his character. It, it seemed like he had character, how he was taking care of his community. And it, it, he just seemed like a humble dude. Um, So when I don't know if you remember, but when his former like label mate or whatever to do, John Doe of uh, America, John Doe, um, a few years ago, had a phone call where he recorded it with Rollo. And he was kind of the first person that kind of was like, yo, this nigga Rollo told. What he told, why he told, and what his reasons behind it was. I still love you. I don't do a lot. You know, I can't complain. My hair still, my hair still Dina, still keeping it solid, you know. <laughs> I like that. I, 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 I ain't opposed to that. Long the, the, the documents that you see is from a prosecution misconduct. But hearing. Okay, but so if you saying that you gave them just the phone information because you knew nothing was in the phone, what about this shit on page twelve, line twelve and thirteen, where it say he is cooperating against heroin, methamphetamine. He knows about shootings and the marijuana. Where it say he is cooperating against heroin methamphetamine he knows about shootings and the marijuana that's what this that's what the transcript say okay, I, 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 i'm not i'm not opposition to that listen when they when you go in there they ask you other questions i, I, I made my presentation they started asking other questions they started asking you other questions they started asking you other questions they started asking you other questions you know the code though i this that's what i'm saying you know the code you ain't pulled ahead no meeting I, with them folks in the far play I, 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 I mean, uh, I was presented a, a, a situation that that other. I just you just something. I just only reason why you know about this is because of the prosecution misconduct here. Did you see when he called wife and Lucci? Yeah, yeah. I thought that shit was super hot. That was weird. Like he was bro, just like if about Lucci in that interview, bro. If wife and Lucci is your man's, you know he fighting his own Rico. You just came home. Why are you call? Why are you showing the world that y'all is? Talking like that. That's weird. Uh -huh. Then when he asked wife and Lucci, like, man, I'm finna buy your kids some shit. Wife and Lucci, like, nah, bro, I'm straight. Uh -huh. So it's yeah. like, to me, that's very interesting too. Cause it's like, it's not a lot of niggas who <laughs> was standing with Rollo before he got locked up that you see standing with him now. Including Fair America John Doe, who you will always see with Rollo. And when Rollo got locked up, he was the nigga waving the Rollo flag. He not around no more. Um, Gucci man used to fuck with Rollo. I don't, I don't see Gucci put his arm around Rollo. Um, Birdman used to fuck with Rollo. I ain't seen Birdman put his arm around Rollo. So when I add up all that shit and then the weird shit with White Man Lucci phone call, him over explaining himself, people coming at us on the internet about all we making fake paperwork. That's why I t that's what this video about today. We gonna dispel all the rumors. We gonna go through all the paperwork that how we read it we not gonna make no vid this we not making no video bro i'm not gonna do no editing on this shit i'm a literally we literally gonna just go through the paperwork so this was the original short or whatever you see 170 comments motherfuckers mad and shit okay so the original reason why i posted this was because these are court minutes so a lot of people don't realize that like 
Sometimes you can look at a nigga paperwork. You can look at the police report, the arrest report. Did he make a statement? You can look at all that shit and you might not see nothing. But in the court minutes, we know everything because the people write that shit down while they talk. Mm -hmm. So this is where Mr. Buchanan, who is the U.S. attorney, says, why does this have to be under seal? I guess is my question. Then Mr. Steele, who is Rollo's lawyer, says, well, I would like to if I can. And then he got cut off by the by the judge. That's why they say the court. That's the judge. So the judge says, well, I'm going to leave the exhibit itself under seal right now. The blank, meaning proffer, probably, you know, it talks about a whole lot of other people. So basically, the original post that caused all, like for our channel that caused all the bullshit was we posted a short that came from Famerica John Doe, like. I went to his page. He had all the shit up. This was something I thought was important. The 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 court, the U.S. attorney is like, why do we got to seal this shit? Like, why is this? Why does this have to be under seal? And if you look, Mr. Steele, look above that where it says, mm -hmm. and then, your honor, 15 is the June 6th. We know he had a proffer on June 6th. Yeah. You know, I know you have that before. Can we admit that under seal? So that's where they're literally saying, hey. That June 6th proffer, we already had sealed it. And whatever this new shit is, can we admit that under the same seal? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, when you get uh when you get Rollo basically saying, like, hey, you know, if you understand street business, then you understand that there's fall guys. Well, a fall guy, you don't gotta seal it up. Um, you know, uh this is important, too, because this is what happened when Rollo was first arrested. And like I said, man, we're we going to provide links to all this paperwork because we just had to clear the shit up. So after they say that Davis and the attorney uh, had illegal drug trafficking messages, the next sentence is Davis refused to provide any information on the marijuana supply. I think that's weird. Like, why is they right next to each other? Now, what would lead me to... It seemed like this is the lawyer was the was the plug and shit. Is that when you go down here, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It says that Davis stated that he was prohibited from cooperating against his heroin connection. Davis also indicated that the plug was on his deathbed for surgery. Davis refused to provide any information on the marijuana supplier acts of violence. Technical file. Why the fuck is you even mentioning the heroin supplier when you got caught for weed? Because they was because he was in the meeting. He had a so when he originally got arrested, but but they do that. When, when you originally get arrested, they're gonna put you in a room, they're gonna ask you questions. So originally they said, Hey man, what's up with these statements with you and his lawyer talking about drug business? And he like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. But for some reason, they don't say that he refused to provide any information on the conversations between him and his attorney. They just say. You talk to your attorney about drugs, but he refused to provide information on the supplier, which could kind of be like, wouldn't well, is the lawyer the supplier? Yeah. It's, it's just very close in, in their wording. And then when they when he says, hey, man, I can't talk about my heroin connection um, and that the plug was on the death bed, then he also refused to provide any information. So it's like it's two people they was looking at the lawyer in the, in the heroin plug. And they believe that, you know, the heroin plug was the heroin plug. Clearly, who was the marijuana plug? I don't know. That was kind of weird. Either way, um, that was the first meeting where, so we want to put that out there too, because like I said, we're going to painstakingly go through all this paperwork. So when he was originally arrested, he did not talk about nothing. Um, Now, let's go back. I want to go here. So we know originally he didn't say shit to nobody about nothing. Thanks. But there was a proffer. Hold on, fuck. There was a proffer on June 6th of 2018, which would have been, I don't know, maybe two months, three months. Shit, like damn. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ, bro. I suck. I suck at just this computer shit, bro. I'm just trying to look at the damn picture big. And every time I touch it, some goofy shit happened, bro. It's shit's irritating. All right, hold on. I'm just trying to zoom this shit up so we can look at it. Okay. Now, I just want to be able to fucking scroll up and down on the paper. I guess you can't, ain't no scrolling because it's just one big paper. Yeah, just one. 
Right. So, and I, I thought that this paper, I found this like on Google, just searching this shit, uh, just doing research on like as much information as I can. So this is not part of, I don't think this was part of the link of all the uh, documents that you had gave me. Um, no, nope, but it says that it definitely said that there's a June 6, 2018 profit. And then it's some shit blacked out. Of course, something about the June 6th proffer is blacked out right here. I thought this was good right here. It says that Mr. Davis provided information to the government. And it's my belief or our position that Mr. Steele and Mr. Davis want that fact kept out of the public's knowledge. That is the point of the conflict. Their argument is that the United States knew or blank, 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 blank. Nigga, y'all helped him do that proffer on June 6th. So the U.S. state's attorney or the U.S. district attorney or whoever it is, they really being an asshole right here. Because mm -hmm. they keep saying it in open court. They know that all this shit get recorded. They're saying in open court, hey, there was a proffer on June 6th. And it is the government's belief that the lawyer and the defendant don't want nobody to know about it. Mm -hmm. And there was a point of conflict right there. The lawyer trying to seal it up. The government, like, why? Why we got to see it? You see what I'm saying? So I thought that was important. Like, man, what's up with this June 6th proffer that... No, that is very important. That's, that's going to be key through this video. Right. So because at the end of the day, they only... There's very few reasons to seal proffers or to seal meetings or to seal court dates. There's, there's like, damn near no reason to seal... Unless a, a live person who is free, who could do harm to you, is talked about. That's why the lawyer would be able to seal it, because there's a person who alive, he's not in jail, and he will do harm to the person or their family if he find out this shit. So we got to seal it up. So I just thought that was important right there, because then that, that's like, look, that for sure. And again, these are minutes. Um, Shout out to News Made It. OK, here's the next page. I thought this page was important because this page have a lot to do with what Rollo said in his Say Cheese interview. So for people that may be just hearing about this, Rollo recently, probably a week or two ago, just did a Say Cheese interview. And in the interview, he talked for a long time, like a long time, like he was like trying to teach people something about fall guys. Patsies, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to teach people about, hey, when you a real boss, you don't just take the charge if another nigga take the charge for you. I can I can understand it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's reasonable, reasonable. But it was seen that in the meeting where Rollo revealed to the feds who the potential fall guy could be, his lawyers weren't present. No one hmm. was present. We believe that's that June 6th proffer that they're talking about. And that's why it got sealed up. That's why it was so much conflict about it, because the lawyers wasn't even there. In this document, it's basically letting them know that by July 24th, which was about a month and a half after the June 6th date, Mr. Steele was on notice. And Mr. Joshi, who we know about from the other page, Mr. Joshi, he's still his lawyer. They were put on notice about Mr. Davis's cooperation, because that's when... Uh, now, this part got cut off, but I believe that's when I um, something like was made aware of them as to why they're having another hearing. So the lawyers was like, yo, what's up with this new court date? Like like we and they even said that. Um, well, I'll come back. But they even said that Mr. Steele argues that he has. You know, basically, he was in the process of negotiating a plea for Rollo when he was put on notice about Mr. Davis's cooperation. And that's why they didn't understand why they were having another hearing. Now, this is the government talking right here. It's the government's understanding that because of that proffer or because of this new hearing coming up, that Rollo was intending to plead guilty and cooperate. That's what I believe that's what this word is. Like I said, it got cut off. That's, that's, we just going to keep it real. Like, Rollo was intending to plead guilty and cooperate. That's why he did the June 6th proffer. 
The lawyers found out about it no later than July 24th, and they were upset because they didn't understand what's up with this new hearing. They believe that they were already in position to negotiate a plea for Rallo in July before Manu Jones is arrested. He's arrested on or about the 20th of August. So that's about two months after the June 6th proffer, a man named Manu Jones is arrested. But before he was arrested, Mr. Steele was already talking to his client about cooperating. So basically, Rollo jumped the gun on his lawyer. His lawyer was trying to negotiate a plea. His lawyer was like, hey, man, we might have to cooperate with him. Before his lawyer could really do his lawyer shit, Rollo sat down with the feds without his lawyer. And the lawyers found out in July. And by August, a man named Manu Jones is being arrested. Um, when you look at the paperwork currently, Manu Jones is still fighting this case. So I believe that's why Rallo was on the Say Cheese interview overly explaining this fall guy situation. What you what you think so far, bro? Like so far, where like what you think? Well, without getting into too much far ahead, I'll say this like it seemed like to me, like, you know, Rallo knew he made a bad decision when he sat down talking to them because, you know, one thing about Rollo when he was out, he preached honor, you know, and one, he's very he's very big in his belief in his Muslim faith, which I respect, but he, he, he forgot one thing. That don't cover the loyalty part. You know what I mean? Loyalty and honor to me is two different things. You can have honor without loyalty and you can be, you can be loyal without honor. So I could be loyal to a fault, to, to something that don't really matter or is not honorable. But if I'm honorable, I know where I stand as a man and I'm not going to cross that line. It seemed like he knew he crossed the line. And by the time the attorney figured it out, he, 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 he it, then again, he didn't even tell his attorney. So that right there shows proof of like, I know I did wrong. I'm ashamed of my of what I did because it goes against what I stand for as honor. No, facts, bro. Um, so then, like I said, I really don't want to make this video too long. It's really we're really responding to Rallo's response and we're responding to uh, the, the you know, the culture. We not out here to call people rats. We are not out here to overly jump on people back. If you notice, man, if people pay attention to the channel, man, we ain't really been on that shit for a few months now. It's been a few months. We ain't had no, I guess, uh, rich homie Quan. He was tested. He tested. Yeah. He, he, he may testify. I don't know if our video made it to where he's not going to testify, but they got him on the list. And even if he don't testify, they do got the video. But I just thought that was important. Like, man, nigga telling on me and don't know he being recorded. Like, that's wild. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But other, but since then, like, we ain't really been going over and above and beyond trying to prove this person told, this person told. Like, it's really a lot more stories to tell, man. Um, R.I.P. Bloodhound, uh, Lil Jeff. That's a story that that we working Rest on. Peace. So yeah, so people that's interested in his story, like beginning to end, uh, we we gonna work on that story. That's something that's coming soon. Um, also, man, uh, the news, man. I just sat down with Drea. Oh, man, the news about uh, El Mayo being set up by El Chapo's son. I thought that was a, a dope story. So that's something else that people uh have already seen or 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 or, is, or could see on the channel. So it's a lot more than just who telling, but. This is the last page I wanted to get to because like we kind of laid out everything, all the details. Now, on this page, this is when you sent me his PSA or his pre-sentencing minutes. So when he was sentenced, these are the minutes of the actual sentencing hearing. A lot of times you will find out if a nigga cooperated during right before he gets sentenced. Um, I thought it was a few things in the sentencing that I thought was important, too. I'm going to let you get to them, but I just thought this one was super important where it says that, now this is his lawyer talking to the judge. I'm not saying that he's not responsible for his own conduct. He just fell in. As the court, I think, will hear at your upcoming trial on related cases. He was just guided in a terrible direction and he willfully went along with the criminal conduct, but he didn't have to do that. So this right here is Rollo's lawyer admitting that information provided by Rollo or gleaned out of Rollo's court case will become relevant in upcoming trials on related cases 
we believe that have to do with Manu Jones. And that's why, again, Rollo's over talking this Patsy, this fall guy thing, because there's a person that still got to fight a trial over the same shit. And Rollo name going to come up and maybe shit that Rollo said or maybe shit that Rollo happened. His case is going to come up in the dude Manu case. Whether he taking care of his family for it or not, I'm not I'm not sure about that, but I'm just we just breaking down every little piece. You see what I'm saying? So basically doing this research, I noticed the June 6th court date on Pacer is not there. So this court, this, this, this uh proffer agreement that took place was not noted in his it looked like trial transcripts on Pacer. Right, where it give a date of everything that happened, every court date. Everything. And then you also have about just off the bat, when you go through it, you see at least 10 off the rip within the first couple of scrolls, documents and things that were sealed off the rip with a lot of different numbers. He does have a 3553A, which some can be confused with a 3553F, which is a, a safety valve only. But one thing I did notice is on uh, July 10th, he had a court date or something like that. He did a pre-sentence uh, report. And in that in that uh, motion that or in that hearing that that I'm about to talk about, which, like you said, it, uh, he didn't want things public. Clearly on this transcript, it says on three different lines that Rollo and his attorney don't want this thing public or to get out. And that goes to what you said. If you're just giving the information on somebody that knows you're going to do it or you're giving it on a dead man and there's no threat to your life, what are you sealing it for? That's not the only thing. You got other things that's, that, that 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 are coming out because the whole, you know, I'm going to send you the whole June 6th thing that's not showing so people can see clearly that this ain't just some made up shit. But between all these sealed uh, documents and these these proffer agreements and these uh these open hearings where these uh, attorneys are saying this stuff, there's just a lot of things in this, this case that bring rad activity. And then you throw in the fact that Rollo came home to a silent homecoming. His home hometown is not messing with him. But you got people who will go on Vlad or go on here and say, oh, Rollo just paid for a fall guy. If he paid for a fall guy, there's no reason to seal no documents. Because at that point, it's 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 you're you're not really telling on nothing that's gonna affect, I mean, yeah, it'll affect your reputation, but you're not telling on nothing that's that's worth sealing. Right. So once and, you and, I, and to be stuff, honest, I, and to be honest, real quick, not to cut you off, I watched the the whole interview with him and say cheese, and what he's explaining is real. My bosses, you know, big time people, they have fall guys or, or or just groups of friends. Like shit, if I know I got four cases and you ain't got none, shit, it might be a little. Hey man, shit, if you take the case, we, we all get off better. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that. Um, so him explaining the fall guy shit, I definitely understand. And I understand it from like a mechanic. So I don't think, I don't think the fall guy would fuck up his image. I was just throwing that yeah. in. All right. Keep going over. And that's like, it, it reminds me of that part particularly reminds me of the BG situation. But one thing I do want to throw in there, like I told you on the phone earlier is if we're going to be real, writing and shit only matter to broke niggas. Mm. I, I mean, I hate to say, it, but when you in the street, and you on a low level, that shit matters to you more because you ain't got much. So when somebody telling you they taking you away from what the little bitch you do got. But when you start going up the food chain to like El Chapo and El Mayo, that's part of the game. Who, who the hell we could tell on, pay the police to arrest, get thrown, you know what I'm saying? And then that's we take over game. his shit. Yeah, so it only matters when it comes to, and I hate to say it like that, just broke niggas. And this might not be a popular opinion. Bro, I, I could say lower level people. But in this case, it's such a big deal because Rollo play, has put out this image like he didn't tell, like like he was so honorable. And honestly, I feel like if he did say some stuff because of his religion in prison, it wasn't going to affect his stay in prison because Muslims are like this right. in prison. So, I mean, really, it's just for the people to kind of decide. But, you know, right now we're just laying out the facts and we got a whole bunch of facts that are not even being shown right now that are going to be put out in this video. I mean, if we end, need but... to, yeah. Like my thing is this, man, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a thin line when it comes to dropping paperwork on niggas. Like, you know, cause they could look at that as bullying. They could look at that as like putting somebody's safety at risk. 
So we usually try to drop just like the most important shit. You see what I'm saying? Like even at putting the link to the whole file and shit, like we, for this case, we gonna do it. Cause I just want people to see for themselves. There's something else I forgot. In that, in that uh, uh, court hearing you were talking about where he was talking about uh, the trauma he endured, he also made- So in his sentencing, about- in his sentencing uh, yeah. hearing. Yep, he denounced the code. So he basically said, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. So he's like, man, look, look whatever the hell you, you trying to say, I don't live by that code. So once he went down, not even three months later, he's talking to the police. When he gets sentenced, because anybody know, in any case, once you get sentenced, the case is about to be over. So the, the papers are about to be public. He said in open court with everybody there, I denounced that life. I don't live by that code. So basically, don't hold me to that standard. So what when code is he talking about? Snitching. 